Let's see what you got. You smell that? What is that? What? What's that smell? The cologne? No. Opportunity. No, money. Oh, okay. I smell money. Okay. Since the release of the Silent Hill 2 trailer a few weeks ago, people simply couldn't let it go, and it's for good reasons too. The audience was divided into two sides. On one side, you have the Masters, the Veterans, and the Guardians, also known as the people who played the original game during its launch and became addicted to anything about it, to the extent that they can even remember what James had for breakfast when he was a kid. Mama? It's, it's you! These are the people who have an eagle eye, and they focus on the details as if it's a matter of life and death. It doesn't matter if it's James's hair, clothes, or even eye color, they simply see it all, and they want the remake to get every detail right. They are the nightmare of any developer because they demand nothing other than perfection. Anything less would be unsatisfying and a waste of their time. When they see a minor mistake in the trailer, their eyes glow, and they start making an evil laugh before exposing it and mopping the floor with the developers. On the other side of the audience, however, you find completely different types of players. You have those simple people who go by one rule in their gaming life, which is, if the game is fun, then heck yeah, I love it. These people are the most straightforward, and this type of gamer sees games as just a way to have fun without going deeper than that. Relatively good visuals and convenient mechanics are enough to please them as long as the overall experience is enjoyable. Furthermore, even though many of these gamers might have played the original one, they tend to not have that blind connection with it, and they're always open-minded to new things and giving the modern developers a chance. These contradictions between the different groups of the gaming community created a feud over whether the remake should be given a chance, whether the trailer was fine, or if this remake is already dead and there's no reason to be optimistic. Could she really be here, waiting for me? So the real question is, which side is right and which one is wrong? If we're being honest, both sides have reasonable arguments and both have logical points that are true, even if they aren't logical to everyone. However, the new update that no one expected is that the developers of the game themselves are taking a side as well, and they also have thoughts about the trailer that really surprised a lot of people. First of all, let's break down the several points that made the trailer controversial and disappointing for a large chunk of the Silent Hill fan base. The first thing is the deviation from the original, specifically by making it more combat focused. The original Silent Hill 2 emphasized atmosphere and psychological horror, with clunky and infrequent combat as a means of survival, while the trailer showcased smoother, more action-oriented combat which concerned fans about a potential shift in tone and priorities. In my opinion, it's a little bit unfair to judge how much the full game will focus on combat from a few seconds of combat in a trailer that was supposed to be about combat. Beside that, more combat in the game is not necessarily a bad thing if it's properly placed in the story and also if it's optional in many cases and you can avoid it. Many people got angry at a previous video on the channel where Florian said that stealth would be a nice feature in the remake, but that's actually a reasonable idea. Just because it doesn't exist in the original one doesn't necessarily make it a bad thing for a remake where the main purpose is to use modern mechanics. Stealth was not a thing in the original Resident Evil 4 either, but in the remake it was an incredibly important feature in the gameplay that made it even more fun and strategic. For a modern survival horror game, stealth is crucial to minimize the direct confrontation and replace it with psychological tension while you're trying to hide or avoid making noise that can attract an enemy. And by the way, this has nothing to do with making Silent Hill look like other games or anything. Stealth is a feature that exists in human life, and it's realistic. When developers add it to their games, it means that they're adding a mechanic that relates to real life and not copying other games. That's a good point. You've got a good point. The other point that caught people's attention was the visuals. 
Some fans perceive the graphics as dated or lacking the distinctive visual style of the original. And honestly, this aspect depends on your personal standards of what good graphics look like. For many people, these graphics are actually good enough for this remake. But for others, it looks like an Unreal Engine 5 fan remake, and they don't match competitive games like the new Resident Evil titles. In my opinion, it's a little bit of both. Yes, the visuals are not breathtaking, but they're also not terrible enough to say the game is bad just because of them. However, the flaws that almost everyone agrees on are the clunky animations and unrealistic enemy reactions in the combat sequences. As you can see, there's no question about the weird animations and reactions. It doesn't matter how you see it. The combat definitely needs serious improvement, and I'm telling you this as someone who's still optimistic and still hopeful that things will get better. On top of that, the lack of impact sounds for weapons and enemies was seen as undermining the tension, and that's factually true. The gunshots themselves sound like they're being shot under the ocean, which is really funny and throws immersion out the window. But the surprising part is that the developers themselves in Bloober Team agree that this trailer was not good by any means. Bloober Team's leader, Bobby Yeno, stated that the trailer does not reflect the spirit of the game. He clarified that Bloober Team is not responsible for marketing, which is handled by publisher Konami. I am surrounded by traitors and fools! And he also emphasized that the team is aiming for a romantic vision of the original game, which means that the trailer may not accurately represent the final gameplay experience. Oh, really? But more specifically, it means that Bloober Team may have had creative differences with Konami regarding the trailer's tone or content. To be honest, there are only two explanations for this statement from the Bloober Team. The first one is that they were actually pressured by Konami to release this trailer even though they're not satisfied with it and it doesn't represent the final product. The second one is that the Bloober team is trying to distance themselves from the trailer due to the heavy criticism that might affect their reputation as developers in the long term. They don't want to lose offers from other publishers in the future, so they simply decided to act like they don't have any real role in that trailer. The reason that makes me consider this idea is the fact Bloober itself said last year that the game is technically ready. This was literally a year ago in March 2023. The fact that they don't have a proper trailer in 2024 seems a little bit suspicious to me and makes no sense. I lied. I personally believe them when they say that Konami is sticking its nose too much into the work and suggesting some bad ideas, but I also think they are a developer who is trying to save their butt just after they saw the insane backlash and criticism towards the trailer. If the trailer was successful, I'm pretty sure Bloober would be the first to claim responsibility and talk for days about how their ideas are represented in it. But now that it failed, everyone is trying to act like the trailer made itself by itself. You're giving me the it's not you, it's me routine? <laughs> I invented it's not you, it's me. Nobody tells me it's them, not me. If it's anybody, it's me. But the crazy part that proves even more that things between Konami and Bloober are not going very well is the fact that the interview where Bloober's CEO made all these statements was taken down later. This is probably due to Konami's pressure and rejection of what has been said against it. Lies and smears and slander. But despite all this mess, I really see that the trailer being bad was actually a good thing for the game. And this shake from Bloober proves that. The only reason the developers acknowledged the mistakes was because of the criticism from the audience. The trailer literally worked as an alarm for the developers to understand what they're doing wrong so they can fix it. Trust me, if you think Bloober employees don't read the comments under the trailer and don't watch the videos about it, then you're completely mistaken. They see what people are saying about them and they read the flaws that players highlight in the comments. And this makes me confident that they will try hard to avoid every one of those flaws in the next trailer. Mark my words, in the next trailer, they will literally try to prove to the audience that all those issues were fixed and that the previous trailer was just an old thing for testing. 
Well, we're waiting. A designer from Bloober even noticed people's complaints about the sound of the gunshots, and he justified it by saying that it's due to editing, which basically means that he's blaming Konami too. However, he insisted the sounds in the final product would be much better, and people should not be worried about it. I'm positive that Bloober was not going to admit to these flaws if the trailer was received in a positive way by players. But the fact that the trailer was bad and criticized left and right is basically the only reason why we might see a big improvement in the future trailers in the final game. So you're telling me there's a chance. Konami and Bloober wanted to use this combat trailer as a test to see if the audience would be satisfied with something that doesn't take much effort, but the response gave them a reality check. Now, they are forced to raise the bar and focus on quality because they know that fans are not idiots. Before I finish this video, I want to talk about one last thing that some people criticized, including Florian in one of the videos, which was the music choice in the end and how it was placed in the overall trailer. I personally read the comments on Florian's video and saw that the only argument people used against this criticism is that the music is original and was composed by the one and only Akira Yamaoka. They also said that the original trailer contained similar music, which means that it should be suitable for any trailer. My problem with these arguments is that they tend to use the blind love for Silent Hill 2 to defend something even when it's not actually good. In the previous video, Florian explained in the comments that the original Silent Hill trailer from 2001 was a completely different thing and had a different purpose in a different era. And he's actually right. Let's watch together a small clip from the old trailer, and I'll explain to you why it has nothing to do with the one from 2024. Come on. Huh? Are you blind or something? What's that letter? I'm very happy to see me. What do you mean just for that? You can't just kill someone because of the way they looked at you. I'm pretty sure some people who saw the combat in the old trailer said, Aha, we got you, you see? We told you that type of music is suitable for a Silent Hill 2 trailer. Well, yeah, if you focus on that trailer, you'll notice zero shift. The uplifting music is from start to finish, and that's intentional. They wanted to show you the characters of the game casually talking and playing around, and if you don't play the game, you'll basically think that those people have normal lives and there's nothing dark about them. They didn't include any chilling atmosphere and didn't want you to feel anything about the creepy journey that awaits you, or even the tragic story of James and his wife. The atmosphere was not broken because this trailer was not meant to showcase any of the eerie atmosphere that you're supposed to experience in the game. The trailer even makes you feel that all these characters are real and doesn't make you realize that some of them are literally from James's hallucinations. Thank you for saving me. But I wish you hadn't. The privilege that the remake has and developers miss the chance to take advantage of it is the fact that people are now familiar with the dark events, the tragic story, and the insanely scary atmosphere. Gamers who played the game anticipate subconsciously anything from Silent Hill 2 to be sad and unsettling because they already know the conclusion of the game and its backstory. This trailer tried to use that aspect in the first half and the atmosphere was on point. There's no dialogue or anything that indicates normal life in the place. They also make sure to confirm this by showing you some short, terrifying scenes of dead people because they know that you understand the uncomfortable truth behind them if you played the game. The first half of this trailer clearly indicates that the goal was psychological horror to get you in the mood. Shifting to a different tone in the second half made the first part look irrelevant. There's no way you can convince me that you didn't have goosebumps in the first half when you heard that calm, spooky music that triggered very distressing memories you had with the story of the game.
And you also can't convince me that the next part didn't throw those goosebumps out the window. I saw a comment from a viewer in the other video that explained it perfectly. He said this shift is basically something that you feel and it's not rocket science. You can't tell someone who felt the music killed their connection with the scary atmosphere that they're simply wrong. It doesn't make any sense. These are personal standards and they differ from someone to another, but as horror gamers, most of us know how powerful the sounds are at reaching our minds and immersing us in the frightening world of a game. It's obvious that the people who put the trailer together were not sure whether to make it psychological or combat focused. So they decided to put both together, but in a way that made them work against each other, unlike the original trailer from 23 years ago. That's what you wanted. Now I understand. The problem is, you're not married. No, James. I won't let you. I'll never let you have your Mary. Anyway, this is it for today, and please feel free to disagree with me on anything. Everything I said is based on my own opinions and standards, and I'm aware that people who disagree are not necessarily wrong. The best thing about gaming is that there's room for different visions, and they can all be true for certain people. What I like may not suit you, and what you like may not suit me, but we can still respect each other's choices. We don't need to get angry at each other's opinions because constructive criticism has been proven to be the best way to push developers to improve the game. So give this video a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you're new here, and I hope to see you soon. Mary?